Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today here in the studio is Dr. Frida Jordan. Uh, Dr. Jordan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you uh, very much. I think many people in Armenia and the diaspora know you, but just in case there are the, you know, the few percent that don't, you are the co-founder and president of the Armenian Bone Marrow Donor Registry. Correct. Um, you, are a, you hold a PhD in biochemistry from King's College University, uh, London University. Uh, you have dedicated, I think, for the last 20 years, most of your life to various projects in Armenia. And you were here recently taking part in the Armenian International Medical Conference. So we have a lot of things to talk about. Yes. Uh, I want to start, um, perhaps we start with the conference and then we, we work mm -hmm. our way back. Uh, and, and just to reacquaint those viewers who really don't know much about the bone marrow uh, registry. Um, this conference, you told me, it takes place every four years, and it, as from what I understand, brings together doctors or people in the medical profession from Armenia and the diaspora. What is it really all about? Well, every four years, this conference uh, takes place in Armenia, and uh, every other year also takes place in somewhere in diaspora. Like uh, two years ago, it was in Los Angeles, and now it's in Armenia. The aim of this conference is to bring all the expertise together and to uh, work towards a goal of uh, perfection, to more going towards the, uh, the most advanced uh, technology that exists in the field of medicine. And that was the aim of this uh, conference. Now, and the other thing is that it's the, through this conference, it's very important that every um, um, medic in the diaspora uh, or every, every establishment that is in diaspora, they try to find their right partners in Armenia and in order to able to function and to get better or to uh, you know reach their goals and i think this conference uh, uh, tried that tried that very uh, hard i think that the content was extremely good because uh, uh, the topics that it was covered it was towards more towards oncology mm -hmm. and uh, that was the area that uh, armenia is lacking behind oncology and uh, uh, all the he uh, women health issues, again, that's a topic that is very, very important for, um, for the country and also all the advanced technologies that currently they exist in the screening program of uh, um, uh, women in general. Uh, and also uh, all the state-of-the-art technology that uh, Armenia can implement in order to become a hub uh, for uh, medical tourism mm -hmm. as such. So it, it was very uh, nicely uh, organized. Uh, the diaspora, um, all the projects that, uh, you know, including the Armenian Bomara Donor Registry project, uh, we represented our projects for what, what we have achieved throughout these years. And it was nice that people just, they were very uh, encouraged. They like to hear more and they want to participate more. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was nice. And now, how much of this is going to be implemented sure. by the government and the health ministry? That we'll, uh, we'll see it after two years. <laughs> you know, I think that the, the stumbling blocks that we uh, oftentimes uh, find ourselves having to, uh, to overcome is that there is a huge potential in diaspora, certainly not only in the medical profession, but in different professions. But because we're talking about um, medicine right now, um, and oftentimes, you know, as a consumer of the healthcare system here in Armenia, and many people that I know, uh, having raised children here, I, I've seen the shortcomings uh, that exist in the medical profession. What has been the biggest problem to get? Because I, I, I am, uh, I'm sure. Oh well, I, I'm, I'm, I would hope that there are many doctors in the diaspora who would want to contribute to empowering you know, doctors here in Armenia, to improving the profession and, and the sector. What has been the biggest stumbling block to get those doctors, those professionals into Armenia to help elevate? I think the most important thing to realize that doctors in diaspora, they have very limited time to spare. Uh, and uh, I'm not saying that that's, that's a big advantage to them, but that's the reality of life. So uh, if, if a doctor can spend two weeks or three weeks or whatever, there has to be a very good organization to maximize their skills. For example, if they are, uh, they are here for two weeks or three weeks to do uh, uh, teaching or training or even some uh, operations, procedures done, they have to be very well organized and they don't waste time. Otherwise, they'll go say, okay, I, have, you know, I could have made 
a lot of money back home because that's the reality and I'm spending two three weeks here in Armenia I'm not doing anything so the most important thing is that to uh, find the right place the right partner who would really enhance your uh, capacities should that not would be use the health it? ministry uh, obviously it should be but sometimes health ministry is very busy of doing a lot of infrastructure health problems mm -hmm. that uh, probably they are not uh, that much involved in other pioneering uh, technologies. So I think uh, every diasporan Armenian, if, if they want to help with their um, expertise, for example, for myself, if, I, if um, 16 years ago I wanted to establish the bone marrow donor registry, I was so lucky that I came to Armenia through Armenian Relief Society, I met Dr. Sevak Avakian, who is doing their um, uh, uh, clinic, uh, running clinic in Ahurian, and he became my co-founder of this project. So you found a reliable partner. Uh, absolutely. So, and then uh, 16 years ago, now we are in a situation that we, are, we, can, we can become a hub of the whole region uh, because we are the only one to have a registry. We have the lab, which has been. Um, uh, accredited by European Federation of Immunogenetics and we have got a harvesting center and now we have est establishing the cord blood banking. So all this can be done if you find the right person, the right partner that you can trust and then you can expand your But it's not uh, that easy. I mean for a doctor sitting in New Jersey or in Sydney, Australia or in London um, and if he or she doesn't have those contacts there has so this association or this medical conference, is there a global association of medical uh, There are the global organization. Right. The AMIC so is the global. Are they, are they so AMIC should have this consultation group right. that advises every single expertise, mm -hmm. who you go to work with and how you can spend your two or three weeks, a very useful two or three weeks in uh, Armenia. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, AMIC can be a very good consulting group. And I'm sure they are trying to, to achieve that. And uh, the local health ministry should be very interactive with AMIC. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yes. we oftentimes talk about, you know, this, you know, we're hemorrhaging people and uh, diaspora is not involved enough in institution building. Well, here we go. Here we have, I think, thousands, tens of thousands of people like yourself who are in the field uh, who, who, who need this brain circulation. We don't yes. need uh, Frida Jordan to move to Armenia, but we need Frida Jordan to come up with these, you know, very progressive centers of excellence uh, in what this is bone marrow yes. Uh, yes. And, and another thing. So yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, I have established a, a lab in Armenia that is on an autopilot situation. Mm -hmm. uh, that thank God they don't need me to be there every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have got my own work in Los Angeles that I have to go to work every day. But the thing is that just by two phone calls a day, uh, I, can, I can make sure that everything operates very well because you, you know, the infrastructure is put in a way that is, cannot go uh, you know, into different bad direction. Mm -hmm. So I think every single uh, physician, they can be partnered here through health ministry, through AMIC, through somebody who can do magic, I would say, to find that, that right person, uh, and they can start working miracles. Mm -hmm. And we are not the only one. I think there are other projects that sure. they have There's survived. There's the eye care projects. Absolutely, for eye care projects that I, you know, I heard about it, the cochlear transplant project, you know, which uh, every project is very important for uh, Armenia. Now, the only thing that we are different from the other project is that beneficiaries of uh, our uh, um, project is all Armenians throughout Global, the world. Right. Yes, For 10 million Armenians, we can find a donor. Uh, the other projects, the, the beneficiaries is more or less the uh, Armenian people in Armenia. Sure. So that's the only difference. Sure, but sure. all the projects, they have very, very good impact on the progress of the country. Yeah, well, and it's so valuable. I want to talk now about um, the Armenian Bone Marrow Donor Registry. Um, you know, I know that many of our staff have also gone and uh, donated, yes. uh, and it is such an important uh, work that you're doing. Um, how many how many beneficiaries in the last 16 years have you had, if you know ballpark figures? Yes. Uh, well, 
uh, I'm so glad that we could, uh, we started from zero, now we have uh, near 27,000 donors on the registry, and, uh, and your organization has been a big promoter of this uh, uh, bone marrow drive, especially when one of your uh, colleagues, uh, uh, her mother right. was sick with leukemia. And this is how unfortunately it starts. You have to feel on your own skin, right. uh, and then you, th you have to become a victim, and then you, you start becoming a donor. Uh, and uh, so during these 16 years, um, we, uh, we have become an international organization. And that is very important because uh, at, at the onset of this project, we decided we are not going to be a homebrew, uh, something ghetto type mm -hmm. uh, clinic somewhere in Armenia, no. We have put the standards that we work like equal partners world, world marrow donor registries worldwide, and we are a full member of American Society of Histocompatibility and full member of uh, National Marrow Donor Program. So we, we have established all this international networking. Now, a lot of, uh, just last year, there have, we have had 427 patients referral coming from throughout the world, just last year, 2014. Now what it means that when they send a uh, search report, we search our uh, registry, and if there is a donor matching, then we report back to the transplant centers. The transplant centers either select that donors or they say, no, we don't want our donors. Now, uh, the criteria of refusing that donor can be either the patient has gone into relapse, mm -hmm. uh, no longer transplant uh, can happen, or thank God they have gone into remission, so they are healthy, they don't need a uh, um, transplant, so, and so on and so forth. So, our, um, uh, the finished product, that means that our donor has been selected for the final transplant, we had 20. Mm -hmm. However, the number that we have provided as uh, selected donors is a lot because a lot of time we find match donors for Armenian patients in Yerevan, in mm -hmm. Armenia, and they don't go to the transplant because there is no transplant center. Mm. And not many Armenian patients that they can afford to go to Germany or to Moscow or to other mm. European countries. So our, um, uh, and during this conference, a lot of time the health ministry announced that by 2016, they're, 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 they are going to open a uh, transplant center in Armenia. So we hope very much that when the facilities are in place in Armenia, that the number of the, our donors going to the final stage of the transplant mm -hmm. would be much higher. Right. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question before we move on to the next project that you've begun. Um, if somebody I in North America or in Europe wants to donate so that they are on the registry, is that something that's possible to uh, do? Absolutely. We have recruitment uh, uh, offices, mm -hmm. uh, both in the East Coast and West Coast. We have been several times to Canada. We work very closely with our churches and organizations. So whenever they, uh, we, w we go there, we uh, uh, do the outreach program, and then we start uh, doing recruitment. So uh, they can contact through our um, uh, internet. Our website is uh, abmdr.am, and uh, then we can organize recruitments. Right. For, for example, right now there is a uh, um, Camp Hayastan in East Coast, mm -hmm. and we, we send a PowerPoint presentation. Right. So one of the girls there, they can do the PowerPoint and, presentation yeah. and then they, they can join the registry. And when they come to Armenia for a visit, they can always go to the clinic? And Absolutely, our clinic. That's are something the, that you yes, could also... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's on the, we are on the third floor of the uh, hematology center, uh, uh, 7H Nersesian Street. There you go. There we go. <laughs> or they can visit the website <laughs> and get all the, the information. Visit the website and get all the Certainly information. Certainly something to encourage. Now yes. you, uh, a number of years ago, started um, the Court Bank Court blood banking. Court blood banking. Yes. One, please explain that. Yes, the court, blood, uh, the court blood is the uh, segment that uh, um, uh, joins the baby to mother and usually is being cut and is being thrown away as a medical waste. Mm -hmm. Now that segment has got uh, a blood samples uh, mm -hmm. coming through that segment has got a lot of stem cells. Mm -hmm. And stem cells are those immature cells that they can be converted onto, into different cells into the body. In this case, uh, we want the uh, stem cells that uh, uh, goes, it becomes uh, um, uh, uh, red cells, white cells, all the healthy cells. Now, co because this is a very rich source of uh, um, stem cells, we collect the stem cells those, from those cords and then we bank them into the liquid nitrogen and that can stay forever. Forever. Uh, forever, literally forever. Uh, the court blood banking, 
then then you don't need to find a donor right. because if if you uh, store the cord blood for your baby it's 100% matching your baby and god forbid if your baby has got leukemia or other blood disorders you go to the original cord you get their stem cells you, and you treat them so this is like an insurance policy in place for families for young families and we encourage every young armenian uh, mother to um, uh, just uh, you know collect their uh, stem cells uh, cord bloods and reserve there for future. So, so a, a young woman, a young mother having a baby in Yerevan or in some village in Armenia, if they wanted to do this cord blood banking, do hospitals, clinics yeah, offer that we have, service? Uh, we have contracted different hospitals in Yerevan and they know uh, all about this. Mm -hmm. So that young mother should uh, ask the doctor to arrange it. Mm -hmm. and, or they can come to our center. We, we, can, we can contact their own doctor and then we can arrange the collection of uh, uh, cord blood. The cord blood can be two type, can be public, that means uh, uh, you collect blood randomly and then it's available to every single person who needs in the world that cord blood or it's a private one that means you only collect it only for yourself. And that's, there would be a fee for that? Uh, then, you, then you pay for it. Yeah, because it, it, it's got a lot of uh, costs behind and it. And what has the reaction been? Have, have people been doing it? Yes, we had uh, 15 cord bloods so five, far. 15. One five. Okay. And uh, uh, initially there was a lot of resistance. Uh, resistance. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. There was even uh, public some articles in the newspaper saying that no cord blood cannot be helped, uh, you know, for different diseases. And this is not the things that we have invented. Europe and America is doing for the last 60 years. Yeah. And everything is going towards cord blood, everything going towards stem cell um, you know, therapy. Mm. So then we reacted by us writing several mm. articles and then everything calmed, calmed down. down. And uh, now I think hopefully uh, we'll go forward. Yeah, very good. I mean, it's excellent. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and anything that you try to do that's different or new or, or, or People don't know much about you will find resistance, but in the end, I'm sure that's, that society that's will benefit. That's very from typical it. Yeah, yeah. in Armenia. Yeah, it is, it is, it <laughs> if is. they don't do it, nobody else should do it. But well, then we have used to this. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that you are yeah. bringing all of this new innovation and uh, new ideas to Armenia. Uh, Frida, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for giving uh, me the opportunity. And continued success yeah. and luck with all of your endeavors. Thank you very much. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Dr. Frida Jordan. She's the president and co-founder of the Armenian Bone Marrow Donor Registry here in Yerevan. Stay with CivilNet.